instructions I have been received was to give more money to students at universities in exchange of their destiny as I will lure them to bed and have sex. They love money and they have become my victims. Most people knew me. Yellow nice. viewers, welcome once again to another episode of African Confessions HD right here on Extraordinary Africa. If you're still new, in this show we publish lifetime confessions. Uh, usually we publish anonymously for their own safety reasons. And today in our show we have three confessions as usual. Stay tuned as we are going to take you through these stories. Viewers, Without wasting much of your time, let's go straight into the stories. Here is our first story for today. I am a Nigerian guy who resides in Hebra. I have been working for this ogre in Nigeria. He was a white man, originally came from United Kingdom. He employed me soon after I finished the school. I lost all my family members when they were coming to see me at a boarding school. It is allegedly said my father lost control, leading to a head-on with an oncoming truck. No one survived. I quitted going to school till someone told this white man my story. He took me and paid my school fees. I fell my high school and started working for the white man. I have been always loyal to the boss. The white man owned two garages in Nigeria. The garages mainly focused on auto mechanics. I started working for, he, for him as a gardener at his house. Because of my loyaltyness, the boss decided to train me auto mechanics. He applied for me at a nearby vocational training center. I trained as a professional auto mechanic. Started working at the garage. I worked for almost three years as a mechanic. I last saw my certificate on graduation day. He took it soon after I graduated. Maybe he was afraid I might run away from him. Over the past decade, from then, it has been robbery after robbery at the garage. Where's the one which was in Lagos? Clients' cars went missing several times. The company has been making huge losses. My boss decided we should close in Nigeria and went somewhere in Africa. We sold both garages and moved to South Africa. I was the only employee to move with the boss. He trusted me so much. So before we moved out of Nigeria, the boss withdrew all money which was in bank accounts. He put the money in three briefcases. Guys, please don't judge me. I don't know where the spirit came from. I planned to rob the men as soon as we arrived to South Africa. There was a friend of mine already in South Africa. I told him the deal. He agreed, but he did not keep the secret. My friend told his own friends. We arrived in South Africa and got robbed by my friend's friends. They came before him. During robbing, they killed my employer and took all the money. I was left with nothing to start Unexpectedly, I survived by eating from beans in South Africa. Due to these hardships, I broke a store and began selling. So now I'm selling stuff to survive. But I have muti and a snake I use to initiate more girls into my covenant with my river goddess. Instructions I have been received was to give more money to students at universities in exchange of their destiny as I will lure them to bed and have sex. They love money and they have become my victims. Most people knew me by snatching girls. So I did not knew there were people plotting to kill me at the nightclub I used to go. A female cashier I heard them plotting. So yesterday at the club, I forgot to rub my moti on my board. As I was about to enter in the club, I met a young lady from Soweto. She was a friend to that cashier who had the people who were plotting to kill me. The girl tipped me what my enemies has planned. We went to another club. I gave her money for drinks. We went to my place as we were drunk. First, I infected her with HIV and also store your destiny. For the time, I feel guilty. 
after all she saved my life all this beer which made me drunk i was not supposed to do that to that lady guys i need to change how can i be a changed person how are you uncle i saw one of the confessions you posted i have got a similar situation my name is chinebi asante i am 33 i would like to share my story to the world uncle now i confirm god is really there i was born and grew up in the streets of pretoria both my parents are mentally ill started to have a permanent house at the age of nine in the streets we survived by begging we used to sleep in card boxes where wishes tried to take me to their homes it was impossible my mom does not want me to be far from here she was mentally ill but she has been always there for me it was a hard life spending the whole day working unnecessary working just working Sometimes, when your illness was at peak, we could spend the whole day without eating or we could walk at night. If someone tries to give me food, she could throw stones at them saying you want to poison my child. I never bathed till at the age of nine, never slept in a bed or in a room. I spent nine years living in the streets. As I became older and older, my reasoning capacity started to grow as well. I started to notice that my parents were different to other people. Started to run away from them, cleaning other people's cars and giving money for food. One day, I cleaned another lady's car. Inside that car, under the driver's seat, there was many bundles of money. I have never seen such amount of money. I stole one bundle. I wanted to buy drugs. By that time, I have been already starting abusing drugs. Uncle, the street is not a good place for a kid to grow in. Situation forced me into this. The lady noticed that I stole her money. Once she arrived home, came back with giants. They started hunting for me. I was already drunk. They beat me so heavily. I woke up at the hospital. That's where I met a nurse who took me to her house. I spent four days in the hospital. The nurse asked to know more about me. She felt pity for me and took me to her house. That's when I started to go to school. I was very bright at school, but the nurse died when I was in grade 11. She had no relatives. Luckily, since we started staying together, we used to go to church she told the churchmates about my situation. They raised funds for me to finish my studies. Trained as a nurse aide. Now I'm staying in the United Kingdom. Truly, God is there. Whenever I think of my past, my tears started to fall. Last year, I visited my parents to see them in the streets. I spent one week and two days searching. I only managed to see one. I visited my pastor. He said my parents tried to use juju to get money. They broke the rules from the sangoma and got punished. I am still seeking for help, ready to pay an amount. It's so hard to accept that they don't know. They don't know that I'm here. Very sorry if I offended someone. Can you please help me? I need help. Yellow Solution Uncle, can you please hide my identity? I am a guy and I am in a relationship with the mother of my son. Everything is going as well as it can. She fell pregnant last year and gave birth this year in July. I have to pay damages and do some ceremony for the child, but I have a small problem. Last year, I cheated with my girlfriend's best friend, but it was not anything serious since she had a boyfriend. We slept together uh, without protection once. There was one time when the condom pasted and we brought morning after pill the following morning. So it was not an issue. She broke things off with me last year in November, citing that her boyfriend found out about us and stuff. I let it be. I later found out she became pregnant around that time we had an issue of condom best and I confronted her about the child and she said she did not know whether it was me or her boyfriend who impregnated her. 
but she tried to convince me to make me say it wasn't mine i did not let it go and eventually convinced her to agree to a dna test once she gave birth fast forward she gave birth in july to a boy but a few days earlier than than my girlfriend and i conducted her and asked for the dna test but she brushed me off and gave me stories about how she wanted to wait she told me that a boyfriend is taking care of the child and as far as everyone knows a boyfriend is the father there is no problem i pushed her about the dna test and now she blocked me i called with another number and she flat out told me she won't do the test because it's not my child and i and threatened me with a protection order if i contact her again my girlfriend never found out about us but she is becoming suspicious excuses but i think she is starting to see through them now my problem is my parents are pressurizing me to do this and our tradition is that i have to pay damages and do the ceremony for my eldest child first i asked my father if i can do it uh, with the child i have this wife i'm staying with my father rejected it's important that it's done in order with the eldest first followed by the second i need advice on how to get here to do the test as up first and foremost i would like to thank everyone who confessed today we always learn from other people's mistakes that's effect that's effect my mothers fathers sisters brothers aunties friends as i say each and every day we need to pray we need to pray let's pray for these sisters and brothers of us our daughters and sons before they leave for this tertiary education at the universities and colleges they will be considered adults so we need to be with extra care before they leave we need to pray you can you can do whatever you do but without putting god first it won't go anywhere it's a lesson from the first confession our children our sisters and brothers are at risk let's pray before they leave dear father you are like a wing that shelters my children strong with protection soft with grace you are like a shield that encircles them each day they run free and you are with them as they adventure you are like a crown placed upon their heads a symbol of sonship of belonging of their adoption into your family a lord i place them into your great care and declare that they are yours amen we need to put god first we need to put god first guys if you was tuned into this show for today don't forget to share with your friends and family the guy is saying he is using university girls it might not be him alone but there are some there might be some who have not confessed yet my brother i beg you can you please find god seek for a go- a solution from church start praying and fasting leave all this you won't go anywhere with such thank you so much for sharing uh, this story of yours it was so helpful uh it was in a warning to us thank you so much for sharing i hope you change i hope you leave all this and there was this confession i am a guy and i am in a relationship with the mother of my son 
everything is going as well as it can. She fell pregnant last year and have birth this year in July. I have to pay damages and do some ceremony for the child, but I have a small problem. Last year, I cheated with my girlfriend's friend, but it was not anything serious since she had a boyfriend. We just slept together. Uh, every time we used protection, but for once, uh, the condom bursted and we brought morning after pills the following mornings. She broke things off with me last year in November, citing that her boyfriend found out about us. I later found out she was pregnant and it was matching the day the condom bursted and the guy went on saying she is suspecting that the child might be his again and the child is older than uh, his child with his wife. So, according to their tradition, a, a, a ceremony is supposed to be done for the firstborn before the secondborn. The family is pushing for DNA tests. Uh, the girlfriend's friend who he impregnated is refusing to go with them to DNA. Maybe she is afraid. Uh, of her marriage with her own boyfriend. Oh, okay, my guy, I heard this story. I think I will leave it to comment section. Guys, what's your take on this? What should this friend of us, our brother of us do? Uh, the woman is rejecting for to go to the DNA test. Yet, uh, a ceremony is supposed to be done for the firstborn. Ah, this word. Why were you cheating? Why were you cheating? Why were you cheating? That's a question I'm asking you now. It's not right. And I would like to thank you so much for sharing. We have learned and there might be someone in such a situation. You will be reading comments. Comments. You will be reading comments. Ah, I think it's now time to come out. You should not hide. You should not hide. Tell your wife. Tell everyone what happened. Uh, the boyfriend of that girl should know the truth. Go to DNA test in a godly way. If the child is yours, then continue with the, the ceremony as you are planning. Ah, this world. Guys, that was solution angle for you. Don't forget to pray. Don't forget to pray. Say, now that I am leaving my home, to go to work, I have you for your divine protection on the road. Seek for protection from God each and every time. The devil is at work. The devil is at work. And there was that brother of us saying he is looking for, he is still looking for someone to help his parents who are mentally ill. He is now based in the United Kingdom. You want a solution for at least who would come back to their senses. He is asking for help. That's why we republished the story. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in to Extraordinary Africa. The channel is growing. Don't forget to leave a comment, a like, and a share. That was Solution Uncle for you. Enjoy your Wednesday. Bye for now. Peace. 22 years ago, Makwara family celebrated a newly born baby. He was named Admire after his grandfather. The boy grew up in a farm compound staying with his parents. 13 years ago, they relocated to another farm in search for greener pastures. At the new place, the family stayed happily and peacefully. 
everything turned upside down after Admire's grandfather paid a visit. It is allegedly said that Granny wanted to sacrifice the boy in a money-making ritual. The grandfather was into horse gambling. To boost the winning luck, Granny was supposed to burn alive at least one family member. The boy started dreaming going to graveyards with his grandfather. He started losing mental health to an extent that one day he took himself into fire. No one was in company. An anonymous person discovered but it was too late. The legs were already bent. Viewers, stay tuned. The father will be narrating what happened on that day at the end of this video. Admire is now grown up. He do all home economics before going to work. Admire walks 15 kilometers on knees every day. No walking sticks, no wheelchair, no legs. It's all luxury in his situation. Admire is a security guard at a local farm. His task is to safeguard the crops from stray animals. Yes, indeed, disability is not inability.